Are you moving? Here are the top 10 moving tips I share with my clients. Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Samantha Perlman and I'm a realtor located in central New Jersey. Every week I post videos about what it's like to live and work here and guidance on buying, selling, and investing in the area. If this is something that interests you, consider hitting that subscribe button below and the bell so you don't miss the new videos I release every Monday. In last week's video, I gave you the 10 packing tips that I share with my clients. In this week, I'm gonna give you the 10 top moving tips I share with my clients. There are so many moving and packing videos and blogs and tips and lists and checklists out there. You might be saying, well, why is yours any different? Well, this is the real advice that I give to my clients every single day. A lot of this comes from my own personal experience. You see, I've moved six times in 12 years across three different states. And a couple of the things that you're gonna see on my list, you're not gonna find anywhere else. Number one, start early. Now this is the same as it goes for packing, but this is in terms of getting your stuff arranged and scheduled. If you plan on moving yourself, either with the help of friends or family, make sure you have a conversation with them as early as possible about whether or not they're actually available on the day that you wanna move. Also, if you plan on hiring professionals, you also wanna make sure you get that booked in advance. If you try to call the week of or even the day of, the chances of being able to hire the professional are pretty slim. Professional movers book up fast, especially the really good ones. As soon as you know your moving date, you should be making some calls. Number two, get multiple quotes. If you do plan on hiring professionals, make sure you talk to several different companies and get estimates and quotes from several different companies. Don't just go with the first one. You also wanna make sure that the estimate is as accurate as possible. So when they're asking you questions like whether or not there's stairs where you're going, how many floors and how many items you have, try to be as accurate as possible. It's even better if the company can come out to your home and see exactly how many belongings you have because I guarantee it's always more than you think. Number three, change your address. Now most people know that you have to change your address with the local post office. You have to make sure that they have a forwarding address in their system so they can start forwarding your snail mail. But one of the places people don't think about changing their address is anywhere you order from online. Sites like Amazon or any of the clothing retailers that you typically order from. And I've actually learned this from experience. Now, even though I've been in my current home for the last approximately four years, I actually had this happen to me recently. See, I went online and I ordered from a clothing retailer that I actually hadn't ordered from in a long time. And I wasn't thinking and I went through and I placed my order and I didn't really double check the address. When I got the alert that the package had been delivered and it wasn't sitting at my front door, I did some digging and realized it actually got delivered to our previous apartment. Thank goodness I was able to call the management company and they helped me out and tracked it down and the current tenant was nice enough to hold on to it for me, but that's not always the case. So make sure you have any websites like Amazon that you order from frequently, that you actually change the delivery address in their system before you place an order. Number four, get the correct moving truck. If you're gonna be moving yourself, you wanna make sure you consider two things when booking your moving truck. First, that you get the correct size. You see, I mentioned earlier that your personal belongings always add up to more than you really expect. So when you're estimating how large of a truck you're going to need, it's better to err on the larger side than finding out halfway through the moving day that you actually need to get a second truck. It could cost you more money in the end. You also wanna consider getting a truck with a ramp. Now I know a lot of moving trucks out there that don't have ramps can be a little bit more affordable to rent, but if you're gonna be moving heavy boxes and large pieces of furniture, the ramp is really gonna to prove to be helpful and make your job of moving a lot easier. So it might be worth the extra couple of bucks. Number five, call and set up your utilities. You wanna make sure that you have all of the utilities not only switched over into your name, but you wanna make sure they are actually turned on and working. If it's winter, you wanna make sure that the heat is turned on and working. You also wanna make sure that you have working water in your new place. And don't turn off the utilities at your own place until you've actually moved out. And what I actually recommend to all of my clients is on your old home, make sure that you communicate with the new owners and make sure that they get everything switched over to their name accordingly. And on your new place, you communicate with the old owners and make sure you get everything switched over accordingly. So if you communicate with both sides, then you actually avoid any utilities being totally shut off and instead they just get switched from one name to another. Number seven, take photos. 
Now I talked about this a lot in my renting videos about taking photos if you're moving out of a rental or into a rental, you know, before and after belongings are in and out of the space, but I'm also going to recommend that you take photos of your belongings, both as you're packing and as you're moving. What do I mean by this? I mean taking pictures of all of your electrical wires and how they plug into your TV and your entertainment system and your computer. I'm also going to recommend you take photos of things like furniture that has to be taken apart. And you can even take it a step further and take photos of things like bookcases and decorative elements so that you remember exactly how it was when you want to unpack and put it all back in place. Number eight, safety first. Now this seems really obvious, but I feel like it needs to be said. Does anybody really need the ego boost on moving day? Don't try to prove something by carrying a box that's really too heavy for you or trying to move heavy and large furniture yourself. Ask for help. Moving is already a pretty stressful time. Don't add to it by injuring yourself. Which brings me to my tip number nine, which is to stay hydrated and stay fed. I find that most people forget this on moving day. It's very chaotic, there's a lot going on, and you're trying to hurry up and get as much done as humanly possible most times. But you have to remember to take a few minutes, stay hydrated, drink lots of water, especially if you're moving in the heat. Make sure you have some easy and fast snacks on hand, like protein bars, granola bars, and things that you can munch on in between moving boxes. If you want to last all day, you've got to keep your energy up. And number 10, clean your new home before you move in. Now this may not always be possible, especially if you're moving a long distance, but if you can get access to your new home before you move all your belongings in, I'm gonna recommend that you do the once over and clean. I found in personal experience that no matter how clean a home is, every new homeowner wants to make sure that they've cleaned it themselves. And the last thing you wanna be doing is trying to scrub your kitchen floors as you've got professional movers moving boxes in. So if you can get over there ahead of time and get the cleaning done, at least on your main things like your bathroom and your kitchen and the floors, it's always gonna be better to do that. And I'm gonna take it one step further. If you plan on doing any painting or minor repairs to the home, I'm actually gonna recommend you do that before you move as well. It is much easier to paint an empty room Room than it is to try to trample over some boxes and furniture, especially if you plan on refinishing the floors. Ask me how I know. You see, my husband and I decided we were gonna refinish the floors in the upstairs of our house, but we had already moved in. So we basically had to move out of the entire upstairs so they could refinish the floors. It was a painful process and not one that I recommend. Not only did we have to basically move out of our upstairs entirely, the fumes were so bad that I actually had to stay at my mom's house for a few days. So I'm gonna advise if any of this is in your plans and you have the ability to do these things before you move in, that you take advantage of it. Thank you so much for watching. I Wait, did anybody realize I totally missed tip number six? This was totally by accident. So first, I just wanna say thank you so much for watching the entire length of this video. My tip number six is to stock up on supplies. And I don't mean just packing supplies, I mean your moving supplies. Things like dollies, hand trucks, moving gloves, moving blankets to wrap your furniture, duct tape, packing tape, box cutters, tie down straps, and anything else you might need. If you're moving on your own, of course, ask around friends and family if you can borrow some of these items. If you're renting a truck, sometimes the suppliers of the truck also have these items both for sale or for rent. And if you're hiring professional movers, most of them do come with their own supplies, but it's not a bad idea to have a couple of these things on hand. Now back to the original video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you found this information helpful. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and say hello in the comments section below. And of course, if you know anybody that can benefit from the information I'm sharing, please share the video with them. If you haven't already done so, consider hitting that subscribe button below and the bell so you don't miss the new videos I release every week. Make sure you watch last week's video with my top 10 packing tips I share with my clients. I'll include a link in the description box below. And if you wanna see more content like this, let me know. I'll see you next week.